Depression, Schizophrenia and PTSD are among the most severe psychiatric disorders. But what if they share a common mechanism? I've developed a hypothesis that unifies them into one coherent model and points to their underlying cause. Today, step by step, I'll show you how this mechanism works. Everything begins with the energy required to activate that hold stored in the hippocampus, the brain region responsible for memory and information. To trigger a specific memory or imagination, the brain must provide the appropriate neurons with a precisely defined amount of energy. In different parts of the hippocampus, this threshold varies. But in its ventral C1 region, the safety margin is the smallest. Here, only about 20 millivolts are enough to trigger stored memories or imaginations. Chronic stress through four independent mechanisms lowers the ventral C1 safety margin by about 11 millivolts, from a safe 20 down to about 9. Repeatedly thinking the same thoughts, activates the same neurons. This creates what is called a hotspot, a cluster of about 5% of neurons with increased excitability. This substract another 3 millivolts. In addition, other factors play a role. Genetic variants, THC, alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, infections such as interleukin-6, high sugar diets, and microplastics if contributing in different ways to Ferdherner rowing the margin in ventral C1 neurons. As a result, in about 5% of cells, the margin drops below 5 millivolts. This is the vulnerability zone. The neuron now needs only minimal energy to activate. And this is where the whole problem begins. During normal thinking, the brain sends energy to specific cells in order to activate the information stored in them and to recall the appropriate thought. However, a small part of this energy always spreads into neighboring neurons that store other information. If these are healthy cells, with a large margin, nothing happens. But if there are neighboring neurons, whose margin has dropped to critical values, they undergo accidental depolarization and activation. At that point, besides it what we wanted to activate consciously, additional uncontrolled activations appear of thoughts or imaginations stored in neighboring cells. The most vulnerable are the cells that were just most frequently. In these cells, the safety margin is reduced the most and they become especially prone to accidental uncontrolled activations. The cells in which the safety margin becomes critically low depend on the memories or thoughts activated most often. If this were sadness-related memories, hypersensitivity develops in sadness cells. Analogously, if fear or trauma-related cells were most frequently activated, Critical narrowing occurs in whole cells. It is the direction of these repeated activations that determines the course in which the illness develops. Each time such a hypersensitive cell is accidentally triggered, it does not only release a thought, it sets off a cascade of chemical reactions in the brain. For example, if the critical narrowing of the margin occurred in fear cells, every activation releases dopamine through the mesolimbic pathway and cortisol through the HPA stress axis. This is exactly what we observe in schizophrenia. Excessive dopaminergic activity and chronic activation of the stress axis. This in turn disrupts the balance of neurotransmitters Cortisol causes a decrease in GABA and an increase in excitatory glutamate, and dopamine weakens prefrontal control while strengthening the input from the hippocampus. As a result, the safety margin remains in a critically low state, 
allowing further and progressively easier cell activations. Each unwanted reactivation of a toad generates harmful reactive oxygen species ROS. His molecules gradually deplete glutathione, the brain's natural antioxidant shield. When glutathione levels drop, free radicals begin to attack the most vulnerable neurons, parvalomin interneurons. This normally inhibits the network and maintain balance. Their gradually lost minds, increasing loss of control and progressive dysregulation of the entire network. This is how a vicious cycle emerges. Activation of fear cells causes the release of dopamine and cortisol. This leads to a neurotransmitter imbalance, keeping the margin low and enabling further activations. Reactive oxygen species deplete glutathione and then damage parvalomin interneurons, weakening network inhibition and driving disease progression. EEG confirms that the ventral CE1 becomes hyperreactive. This is precisely where, according to the hypothesis, uncontrolled thoughts ignite. In other emotions, the mechanism is similar. When sadness cells become hypersensitive, disturbances in dopamine, serotonin and BDNF destabilize brain rhythms and deepen depression. When trauma cells are triggered, excess noradrenaline and glutamate plus microglial activation cause local inflammation and micro damage, the hallmark of PTSD. When the excitability margin in a brain area drops critically, the pathological cluster tends to expand, pulling in a new memory traces. If the network remains in a prolonged state of depression, even fear-related memories can become encoded there. This explains why, in some people, severe depression can later develop psychotic symptoms. In many cases, engram clusters intermingle, therefore depression does not always look the same, and schizophrenia can present differently across patients. The dominant valence sets the course of the illness but the presence of engrams with other valences modifies the clinical picture. This is exactly why, in schizophrenia, voices appear inside the head. In PTSD, intrusive memories break through, and in depression, persistent sad thoughts keep returning. According to my hypothesis, it is not chemical imbalance that causes these disorders. It is the result, the effect of uncontrolled activations of memory cells, which in turn lead to chemical changes in the brain. Your neurons can trigger thoughts you do not want. Why? Because the safety margin in the ventral hippocampus has shrunk to a critical level. And various oscillations. Not only energy from a night barring engram can accidentally activate them. Which cells lost their margin first determines the course of the illness, schizophrenia, depression or PTSD. This is still a new hypothesis formulated in 2025 and awaiting confirmation. But the more people hear about it, the faster it can be studied and tested. And this is only the beginning. In my next video, I will show why people in cities fall ill more often than those in rural areas, and how geomagnetic waves may influence the human brain. See you in the next episode.